Hello and welcome. It's a new Wednesday, a new new comic book day, and a new graphic novel review from me, Andrew Ace. This week I'm going to be discussing um, the best reads of Ed Brubaker, who's a writer uh, probably most famously known for the death of Captain America, uh, bringing back Bucky Barnes slash Winter Soldier. Now, um, just before we get rolling on that, at the end of the last episode I mentioned that uh, you can reach me on Twitter or Instagram uh, at UYS999, so that's my last name, Ace, but spelt, yeah I know, um, 999, so um, also my handle here on YouTube. Now, back to the matter at hand, great graphic novel reads. Uh, Ed Brubaker has done a number of amazing runs on a, on a number of amazing titles. An honorable mention goes to his work on Daredevil, uh, his work on Uncanny X-Men, uh, and his work on Gotham Central, um, which unfortunately I haven't read that last one, um, but I, I've heard many great reviews of it. So, uh, I've gone through my graphic novel library and chosen a few books that, uh, you know, I think maybe it sounds a little less, no, I don't want to say mainstream, but highlighted uh, as, except for one of them, they're not sort of your big superhero uh, movie tentpole kind of titles. Alright, so first up is Criminal, The Last of the Innocents. Now, uh, this is by Brubaker, Ed Brubaker, who's a writer. Um, uh, the artist is Sean Phillips, and you're going to see him coming up well, a lot on these graphic novels. The two of them have uh, collaborated together over, over the years, uh, and uh, I really enjoy the work that they put out. So, Criminal is a sort of crime, no, sort of a crime noir pulp um, comic book done by Icon, which was an imprint of Marvel. And uh, this is the sixth volume. Take a look there. Uh, and each one is essentially a standalone storyline, though some of the characters do repeat uh, as, you know, sort of what's become of one of them or their fates are revealed um, in, in later graphic novels. What makes this so good, though, um, is just the sheer, when I say ordinariness of it, um, these are real people, real lives, real problems. There's no superheroes here, there's no fantasy, no sci-fi, um, and then it comes down to matters of love, of money, of betrayal, uh, and the bad things that we as people do. Now, why I chose this volume over the previous ones uh, is really because, um, apart from being maybe them at their best, but uh, they really uh, juxtapose, juxtapose, uh, wow, I'm not going to get that word. So, uh, you get this really neat Archie style of art that goes against uh, Sean Phillips' normal style. Uh, and it really highlights um, the flashbacks of the character's youth. Um, but then what they were doing in their youth, which is probably like what we were doing in our youth, um, as opposed to kind of that Archie, uh, wholesome uh, world that, that uh, you know, people kind of want to create. Uh, regarding being young and being a kid. So um, if you're into crime stories, mystery stories, um, just good pulp noir where everybody's kind of bad, nobody wins, um, and and you kind of are left with this you know cold feeling in your stomach when you're done, um, but you can't wait to read their next work, then this is a title for you, Criminal. Next up is uh, Fatal. You've heard me mention this one before, so I'm just going to gloss through it really quickly. Ed Brubaker, obviously, Sean Phillips, again. Uh, this is a Cthulhu Lovecraftian uh, crime noir, uh, and you'll hear me saying some of those words a lot. Um, I mean, A, Ed Brubaker has tried to write uh, or contribute to uh, the modern noir and modern crime genres, um, but at the same time, what has made it so interesting is he's gone back in his work um, and, or gone back and drawn upon historical work, uh, historical styles, and then trying to reinvent them in the comic book for the modern era. I really like that. Um, if it sounds a little too wacky or weird, I apologize. I certainly will mention that this is a dark, uh, very sexually charged, uh, lots of action, lots of violence. 
um, but also an incredible mystery as the story is being told uh, out of time or out of order and you're having to kind of put together the pieces. So there's four or five graphic novels, five I want to say, uh, that complete the run and it is a done story which I know uh, helps attract some readers. They're not you know, committing to an indefinite period of time or 10 years or, or something like that before they'll find out the ending. Uh, a great read, especially if, like I said before, you're a Cthulhu Lovecraft uh, fan. Definitely a must read then. So, this is uh, Ed Brubaker's obviously big, you know, Marvel, uh, everybody knows about a title, uh, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Um, there's two parts of this that are being recollected in a, in a bigger, cooler graphic novel. Uh, and uh, he then went on, obviously, to write uh, the death of Cap death of Captain America. There's a couple of graphic novels in between, um, and that's really just to say that Ed Brubaker went and wrote one of the defining Captain America series volumes run, however you want to put it, uh, that's out there to read. Uh, I'm a big Captain America fan, uh, so that praise doesn't come lightly. Uh, he does work with a number of different artists. On this book, it's Steve Epting. Um, and Mike Perkins uh, joins the team and uh, what you see here is an infusion of Ed Brubaker's signature style espionage crime noir brought into Captain America's world and I think what then struck a chord with fans was that this wasn't uh, the quite you know flag waving symbolic hero that you know had lost even a connection maybe to the horrors and reality of World War II um, he returns Captain America to a soldier, to a special forces agent, uh, and that really works. What also, though, uh, made waves the time that this came out was that um, Ed Brubaker bought, brought back Bucky Barnes, Captain America's World War II partner, that had sort of been one of the famous uh, stay dead uh, characters uh, along with uh, Uncle Ben of Spider Man. So when that happened, um, a lot of fans went pretty crazy, um, but it really seemed to work out. Uh, a, uh, the storyline was phenomenal. Uh, you have then the revealed history of the Winter Soldier, uh, and B, um, when the Winter Soldier slash Bucky Barnes became Captain America, um, spoilers, uh, and I hate to say it, uh, a lot of this title informs, uh, I think, the Captain America movies that are coming out. Um, but uh, the fan response was so huge that they kept Bucky Barnes uh, as Captain America longer than they originally intended um, and have definitely pumped up uh, the Warner Soldier's role both in the comic books and uh, in the movies. Uh, and like I'm saying, uh, Ed Brubaker's Captain America, uh, his Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier, all of this uh, very much uh, the groundwork from which the, Amer uh, the Marvel cinematic universe is being built upon. So uh, a great read, whether you're a Captain America fan or just want to know the, the richer backstory to the Marvel movies. So, um, last book, uh, and actually I should throw out just another quick honorable mention, Incognito. Uh, and the reason why I'm not showing that one and this one is, uh, this came out first, um, and in a way, they're, they're, they're very similar. And by that, uh, if I have over here uh, Brew Baker doing crime noir straight up, and then down over here Brew Baker doing crime noir uh, supernatural, uh, this is his crime noir superhero. Uh, and the reason why I don't maybe give that quite to the Captain America graphic novel, that title, is that it's still a more mainstream comic book. This was done under Wildstorm, uh, ostensibly tied into that universe, but I'm not an expert on it, and I certainly didn't need to be when reading it. And uh, this is a fantastic story of a superhuman uh, undercover agent. He's infiltrated uh, a supervillain slash superpowered cartel, um, and the the sort of you know, monkey ranch and all of the plans is that his boss, the only person who knows he's gone undercover and not bad, uh, not a burnt agent, which is what they sort of convinced everybody, uh, his boss is in a coma. Uh, and so the main character stuck in the supervillain organization, posing as a supervillain, not sure who he can trust, even in his own organization, because there's obviously a mystery around why his boss is in this coma. 
uh, and sort of stuck sort of playing out being a villain, being shot at by his colleagues, while still trying to, you know, crack the case, uh, finish the job. Um, this is a very dark, very mature comic book. Um, you know, maybe when compared to, to Fatal here, uh, the same, you know, I'd say 16, 18 plus as a reader. Um, but I think, you know, when you think of some of the superpowers and how amazingly well uh, Brubaker paints this world, uh, at the same time, it leaves one very, I don't know, very disturbed. Uh, if maybe, you know, you were a younger reader and uh, you were picking this up thinking, you know, it was superheroes and supervillains jumping around in tights. It is not that. Um, this is for, uh, you know, older readers who, who want their, their heroes and anti-heroes uh, to, uh, you know, be a bit darker, grittier, uh, and more backstory fleshed out. Anyway, uh, I could rave about any of uh, Ed Brubaker's books for, for ages. Uh, I love him as a writer. Uh, obviously, you saw here, like, that one was also Sean Phillips, but he has worked, obviously, with a lot of other creators. Um, and uh, I would just suggest, uh, you know, giving him a Google, uh, looking up his bio, and um, <clears throat> trying out some of these great graphic novels. You won't be disappointed. They're phenomenal reads. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a great week. I'll see you, uh, I'll see you next New Comic Book Day. Cheers.